So how do we quantify the um, amount of visitors on our site that spend, let's say, three minutes or longer on the site? And how can we set that up as a conversion? Welcome to the channel, my name is Leon. I believe analytics can help you make better decisions and it can help you improve the quality of your work. And today I wanna to talk about setting up conversions based on session duration. Usually we would set it up based on, for instance, a thank you page or if somebody fills out the form. But in some cases we wanna track how long people spent on the site and we want to set thresholds. And if people, for instance, spent longer than three minutes, we want to track that as conversions. And we're gonna set it up today. Let's go. So first of all, where did I get this idea? Well, I didn't make it up myself. Other analytics platforms uh, have this functionality built in. For instance, Matomo, if you go into goals and you say manage goals, and you click add a new goal, you'll have the option to say when is this goal triggered. It's triggered when people stay for a certain amount of time, greater than, for instance, three minutes. And this is how you set it up in Motomo. And at the time of recording this video, Universal Analytics is also still live. So while I have the opportunity, let me show you what I mean. So in Universal Analytics, goals are set up under admin and then under goals. And then I can go into new goal and if I set up, for instance, this test goal, I have the option of selecting a goal type. And goal type can be like a destination page or a thank you page, but it can also be duration. And a duration goal uh, will give you the option of setting a threshold time limit. So if, if somebody, for instance, spends longer than three minutes, that person, that session would count as a conversion. So Google Analytics 4 does not have this functionality built in. And while I was transferring a lot of sites from the old analytics setup into Google Analytics 4, um, I, I needed to come up with a workaround. And I developed a small script that I want to share with you today that you can use without any technical knowledge to get this uh, set up and working in your account as well. So before we go into how you set this up, I want to first discuss a little bit with you what's the point of setting this up? Why would you track users that spend uh, X amount of time as conversions on your site. Well, to, to explain this, I need to talk a little bit with you about customer journey. The customer journey of your users is a topic uh, that's really important if you want to understand visitor behavior on your site and how people perform certain actions. On your site, you probably have some big main goal. For instance, you want people to purchase a product, you want to, people to apply for a new job, you want people to sign up for a subscription service. There is some big goal that you want people to take. But depending on the product, depending on the market that you use, the, the time that people need to go from cold to hot, from I don't know about this product and yes, I know about this product, I want to buy it, takes time. And that's called the customer journey. Uh, and the customer journey, in the customer journey, people can can go can go through different phases and without going too deep into this um, usually we would track the big goal only so in, in in the past we would track the big goal only we would track the amount of purchases we would track the amount of uh, uh, job applications or uh, subscription signups uh, but additionally to that measurement additionally to that that kpi we want to in the customer journey we want to set different KPIs that kind of represent different phases in the customer journey. And this is where a conversion type like this comes in. For instance, if, if somebody um, comes into your site and starts reading, a big sign of that, that the site and the content on the site is interesting is the, the length that they spend. And if you have, for instance, a, a, like a banner adv advertisement or you have uh, you have a blog post that you that you uh, that you wrote specifically for that purpose for people in that phase of the customer journey you want some KPI that says hey you did a great job if you track the results of your blog post of, of your social media post based on the amount of purchases um, those two touch points in the customer journey could be a little bit too far off so you need other and we call that micro conversions that, that represent like that phase of the customer journey. So you have a macro conversion, a, a big goal, a big main goal, and you have so softer micro conversions along the way. And those micro conversions do not re represent any business value yet, but they kind of represent of how many people are there 
uh, going in the customer journey, going perhaps toward that big main goal. So you want to quantify that a little bit and that's where these kinds of goals come in. So you're probably not going to use this as your main goal. There's probably an, a more important goal that, that really represents business value. But if you have, uh, for instance, you, you sell cars, people take a long time before they make a decision on what car they want to drive. It can take uh, maybe a month or three months. You want to uh, set up soft conversion goals to, to kind of quantify how many people are there actually looking to, into buying a car from us. You can also use this conversion for retargeting. You could potentially retarget everybody that visits your site, but sometimes the, the amount of users in that audience is a little bit too much and you want to narrow it down. You want to target only the people that like really are interested. Well, a good uh, indication of interested people is the amount of time that people spend on the site. And a really easy way to set up this audience is by selecting everybody that had this conversion in one of their sessions. So now that we know why we're tracking this, let's go over everything that we need before we can get started. Firstly, you need Google Tag Manager installed on your site. And you need Google Analytics 4 installed on your site via Google Tag Manager. And I'm gonna assume that you have that already set up. And thirdly, you will need a small JSON file that I'm gonna link in the description. You can download that and I would recommend that you download that into your desktop folder so you can find it where you need it. So now you have everything you need. Let's go into Google Tag Manager and I'm gonna show you how you can set this up. So in Google Tag Manager, you need to find the site that you're working in and then you go into admin and then you choose import container. Then you click choose container file. I did save the file into my desktop folder. So I see it right here when I go into my desktop and I click upload. Then I go into choose workspace and I'm just gonna go into an exi uh, existing workspace. The next question is very important. Instead of overwriting, you want to merge. So because overwrite will delete everything that's in your container and replace that with a new container, that's not what we want. We want to keep what we had in the past and we want to add the new tags and triggers and var variables into the container. So I'm gonna choose merge, this is very important. Also, just to be safe, I'm gonna say rename conflicting text triggers and variables, but I can already see that there are no uh, conflicting text triggers or variables in this case. If you're done with these settings, you can just click confirm and it will import all the new tags into your container. So under workspace changes, you can see four different rows. Um, firstly, you see two tags, one trigger and one variable. We're not done yet. We cannot click submit yet. We need to go into our tags page and then we need to find our GA4 event session duration tag. This is the tag that I just added a few seconds ago. Also, there's a script session duration tag in, on this page. We'll leave that for now. We need to open our GA4 event tag first. So we go into our GA4 uh, event tag and then we click on tag configuration and if you open configuration tag you should find a GA4 configuration that has been uh, set up before uh, this video and if it's not there you probably should go back set up GA4 via Google Tag Manager first before you head on with this video. There is an option of manually setting this ID but I've personally never done that and I do not recommend going that route. I recommend setting up a GA4 tag first and it, and it if everything is set up uh, correctly, it should be in this list. And I have this tag as my GA4 configuration tag, so I'm gonna choose this. And then I'm gonna hit save. So by now, everything should already work. So I'm just gonna hit preview to test. And by testing, I can also show you what, what's hap happening in the background and what data is collected. So I'm gonna hit preview, so that opens Google Tech Assistant. I'm gonna connect my site. This should be connected with uh, Google Tech Assistant right now. I can see that my session duration script was loaded. And in the background, while the page is active, there's a timer uh, running. So I'm just gonna go through my site. I'm gonna click some pages and I'm gonna fast forward this video because it's not really interesting. But we will see after a minute, after three minutes, we will see data coming through. Welcome back. I fast forwarded this video. 
let's go and find out what data was tracked. So if I go into Tech Assistant and uh, if I look at the timeline on the left, I see several session duration events popping up. So there's one uh, over here, I see one here, and I see one here. So let's go over what data was tracked. If I select the first session duration event, I see that there was a one tech fired with the name GA4 event, session duration. And if I open that, there was an event tracked with the name session duration underscore one minute. And after a while, there was another session duration event with the name session duration two minutes. And after a while, there was another session duration event with the name session duration three minutes. So the thresholds, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, are pre-selected by me in the script. I'll show you later in this video how you can adjust that. I also want to check Google Analytics 4 to see how data is received on this end. So I go into admin and I go into debug view. And because I've a tech assistant connected, uh, events that I generate will automatically show up in this debug view. And if I go through this, I see from my session, after a while I see session duration one minute, then I see an event session duration two minutes, then I see session duration three minutes. So this is how uh, the data will come through in GA4. I have set this up on my site for a while now, so I can go into events, and I already see these events showing up here. Uh, personally on my site, I've set up session duration five minutes as a conversion event. The rest I just left as a regular event. Uh, you will not see this right away. You will see this from maybe tomorrow or the day after you've set this up yourself. I see these data because the, this, uh, these trackers are running already for a long time on my site. So we're almost done, but before I close the video, I want to show you if you want to adjust some of the settings, how, would, how you would do that. Let's go back in Google Tag Manager. Maybe you remember one of the tags that was important is this script tag. If you open it, at the top you will see a couple of settings, for instance, minute markers. By default, I have set this uh, to one minute, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, and 30 minutes. Let's say, you want to track four minutes also, you just add it to this list with a comma. Let's say you don't want to track 30 minutes and 10 minutes, but you do want to track t uh, six, uh, six and seven, you would do it like this. And you can just save it and it will work. It will track all the minute markers that you have set up here. Also a setting that I uh, put in here is uh, how long should it take before the session expires? And by by default, Google Analytics has a, an expiration uh, time of 30 minutes. So every session will expire after 30 minutes. So I've set it to 30 minutes here also. If your account has a different setting, perhaps it's wise to also change the setting here as well. One small detail that's important to know, if you have a, a website that's running on the background, the counter will stop working. So it will only count as long as the tab is active. So that's what you see here. If the document is hidden, it will stop with counting and it will continue counting if, if, you, um, if you continue reading. And if you press to the next page, it will remember the time you've spent on the last couple of pages and will add the new time to that. So that's it. That's how you set up conversions based on session duration. I hope you liked this video. I hope it was clear. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below. Also, if you like it, please leave a thumbs up. It really helps me get this channel off the ground. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.